to another episode of Allen AF. That's Allen as fuck. The unraw cut version of myself. I'm going to jump right into it. Um, The reason I took a break is because of health issues. I, um, thought I, I, I thought I had stomach cancer. Well, that's what the doctor led me to believe, that it may be stomach cancer. What happened is, after I have a bowel movement, uh, my stomach hurts really, really, really bad. It's like 90% of the time after I have a bowel movement, my stomach hurts really bad. And the pain is excruciating. It, the, the best way I can describe the pain is if you hold a brick in your hand like this real tight and somebody snatched it out. And the pain that your hands will feel from somebody snatching out the brick that's how my stomach and intestines feel every time I use the bathroom. My stomach and my t- everything in here hurts really bad, like something has been snatched out of my body so hard and rough. That's the best way I can describe it. And the doctors don't know what's wrong with me. So they did a, they put the camera in my stomach, they did a biopsy, and they still don't know what's wrong with me. My wife think it's, um, a little bit of IBS, they ran tests, they haven't found anything, they did blood work, uh, I had to call an endoscopy, I had everything, and they do, I had a march, I had a, um ultrasound, I had an MRA, or MRI, whatever it's called, um, they did the CAT scan, they put me in a machine, they don't know what's wrong with me, but I've been dealing with this pain for, I say around a decade now. That's, it's been about almost around or close to 10 years, you know, and they don't know what's wrong with me. I have ginger shots. My wife makes sure I have ginger tea so I can deal with this excruciating ass pain. And um, sometimes it hurts so bad, you know, the, 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 the pain is almost always at five. Um... When it goes a little higher, I still don't mess up my day. I still go to the gym, I work out, um, I, I go on stage, I do my podcast show. I I live my life because I don't let it stop me. You know what I mean? But the pain is 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 a bitch, and I'm just not being able to talk about it because it's not cancer, you know. And um, thank God it's not cancer. And I was thinking about this too, man. You know, because I've been married uh, for almost two years, and I've been faithful to my wife. Real, you know, I've been faithful to my wife. Been a good husband. Uh, I don't even jack off no more. That's how faithful I am to my wife. But I got to be real with you, man. If um, the doctor would have told me I had cancer, all that faithful shit would have stopped. <laughs> Fuck that. All that faithful stuff would have been over. I'm not about to die and be faithful. You crazy? I'm about to die. I got a few months left. And I'm going to be faithful? Hell no. Uh Uh-uh. Nope. Not about to happen. Hell no. I'm about to be a whore. I will be. I want prostitutes at my funeral. I want them to sit there and be like, listen, man, we miss Alan, the ass eater. I want the I want it to be disgusting. I want some disgusting sex if I'm about to die. And if you know, if I had a few months to live, oh, I want it to be disgusting. Uh-uh. I love my wife. Crazy about her. But if I'm about to shut it down, um Yeah, we might we're gonna have to make arrangements. You know? She got the rest of her life to live and I need the rest of mine to live. I'm just saying. You know, that faithful stuff had to stop. Shut it down. You know, but I was happy when I um, found out I didn't have cancer. I was like, hell yeah. Then I was like, damn, I got to continue to be faithful. Mm. <laughs> nah, I um, I wouldn't want to no other way, though, man. I, I wouldn't. I'm too grown now, now. Be out here in them streets fucking around. Cheating, cheating. Cheating is fun, but it's exhausting. You know, it is. 
And then, so, you know, th- this day and time, you know, more people are getting into poly relationships, polyamory. That's uh, basically when it's in agreement. You know, you have you with your mate and you have other mates and they have other mates and they everyone knows about each other. It's called a pod. It's called a pod. The people you sleep with in your group, they're called a pod. And everyone knows about each other. And everyone has a relationship with everyone. And it, there's no secrets. I won't be in a pod um, because, A, because I don't want to. But B, my wife is more attractive than I am. And, you know, she can easily find somebody to hook up with any day of the night, any day, any day of the week. You know, she can go see Charles or Dennis, you know, Jerry, anybody. You know what I'm saying? And my pod, man, mess around with women to be flaky. That'd suck. I bring my wife this, you know, let's be poly. And, you know, I talk her into it and she's like, you know what? I guess let's do it. And then she getting all the dick she can handle and nobody won't return my phone call. That will be the worst. That will be the worst luck. And you can't you can't stop it because you're the one who brought her into the relationship. You can't stop now because what? You ain't getting no ass on the side. You jealous? Your wife coming back home walking weird. You know what I mean? Because she didn't got extra dick. And you horny because you ain't getting none. And she like, I'm sore. Hell no. Mm-mm. Nope. I can't be poly because I'm selfish. Hell no. I seen that show. It was a poly, it was a um, show on, I think it was on Showtime years ago. It was a polyamory. And, um. Basically, that was the that was the happen. That's what happened to this one dude. It was a couple living in San Diego, and the lady was attractive. The dude, he was ugly. He was he wasn't attractive at all, but he was the breadwinner. It was his house. He paid for everything. He had all the money. Um, so what used to happen is his wife was fucking everybody. She had all kind of dudes she was having sex with and women, and you know, because the husband was the breadwinner. He got to lay there and watch. And no one would have sex with him. So he got to like rub the girl's back. You know what I mean? While his wife, you know, ate her out. And, you know, they did all kind of nasty stuff. She was messing with some attractive women. And he had to sit there and watch and rub their back. Because he was the breadwinner. He got to play with feet and rub back. No sex. He wasn't having sex with these women. Was messed up. He sat there and watched people bone his wife. And he sat there and hugged her after they had sex. His poly experience was, um, he was dry humping. He was like a 12-year-old horny boy. He was dry humping people while his wife was getting boned <laughs> next to him. Dude, because he was the breadwinner they let, you know, well, I, I guess I got to dry hump him at least to make him feel good. Some, some women gave him hand jobs. His wife got penises in her mouth while he over here getting a hand job. Because she's like, well, I got to do something to you. You the one paying the mortgage. Damn. His poly experience was messed up. And you know what was funny? He did finally, in one of the episodes, he finally met a woman. And they started having sex. And his wife was jealous. Because he was getting attention. His wife was jealous and the girl he was having sex with didn't want to be with his wife sexually. So his wife was pissed behind that. That was the only time that happened. And his wife couldn't take it. All the time when she was getting all the dick she could handle and a whole bunch of pussy, she didn't say a word. He didn't say nothing. He took it to, He took it on the chin like a G. He didn't say nothing. He wasn't like me because I would have been messed up. Ain't nobody having sex with my wife but me. You know what I'm saying? I would have been, they wouldn't have hated my poly, my unpoly ass. They would have hated me. But he sat right there and took it. Didn't show no jealousy at all. Just let his wife get ran through. And he was just right there proudly rubbing her back. You know? I'm here for you, baby. 
I'm here for you while they ramming all these dicks inside of you. I'm here. Anything you need, he'll go get the water where the dudes are thirsty for boning his wife. They sweaty, he'll go get everybody a Gatorade so they can hydrate and continue to bone his wife. And he took it and never complained. She couldn't deal with one person sleeping with him and not sleeping with her. She had a problem with that. <laughs> she did. That would have been me. That's why I can't be poly, man. You know? Because a woman can always hook up. Any given time, a woman can have sex, you know, anywhere, anytime she feels like it. It could be 2 o'clock and she could say, I want some dick in me by 2.20. And go outside and get it. She can make it happen. But men, we got to talk. We got to have game. You know what I mean? And we got to make sure you get the woman in the mood and you got to say the right things. And it's it's just exhausting. And you know, unless you just want to pay for it, then then you can make it happen too. But, you know, who wants to pay all the time? You want to just come out your money all the time. But, yeah, I couldn't be poly though, man, because, like I said, my wife, you know, She's attractive, and everybody be like, shit, I'll do it. Shit, I hell yeah, i do it. I'll be over here trying to holler at women, you know. And they be like, nah, I'm okay. What you mean you okay? What you talking about you okay? You lay, you ain't getting none. You come lay home. You come home, lay in the bed, and your wife laying next to you. You smell like another dude, cologne. Oh, you want to go see Charles? Yeah, I want to go see Charles. He was funny. What y'all do? Oh, Charles, we we ate. You know, uh, we were so funny. He was so funny. And, you know, I played with his dog. You know, she telling you all kind of stuff. And all you want to know is, did y'all have sex? Oh, of course. Of course we had sex. Yeah. But Charles is not like that. He's not all about just sex. You know, Charles is, and she make Charles seem different. You know, bad at a hurt that you think Charles is different. Your wife thinks Charles is different. And that means when he's different, he's just different than you, better than you. Because he's different. When a woman says somebody, well, man, he's just different. I mean, he's better than you. <laughs> if your woman ever say, oh, oh, Charles, he's just different. That means Charles is better than you, dog. That's what that means. Just different means be, he's better. Trust me. I know. I've heard it before. Oh, Scott, he's just different. Oh, he's different, huh? I mean, he got a lot of money. He paid for everything. And, you know, he wants to talk and stuff like that. He's different. Okay. Bastard. I'm sorry my, wa my water bottle make that noise when I have a sip. Maybe I should just drink out of a glass when I do the podcast, but I need my half gallon, man. I need it with me at all times. I drink a lot of water. I missed the gym today. I didn't go to the gym today because um, I went to sleep. I went out last night. Not out, out. I went to work, did comedy, comedy shows last night, man. I got home late, and then my son woke up early. I had to take him to daycare. I hate when he wakes up early, man. That boy, it's like he knows it. He 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 fell. Asleep. He woke up the other day at nine o'clock, and me and my wife thought he was sick because he's never slept in L.A. before. Usually, that boy wake up about five or six in the morning, seven in the morning. You know, like he's a miner, like he works in the minefield in the mine cave. He wakes up early as hell, dude. So I had to get up. So I ain't go to the gym because I ain't get no sleep last night. But gyms are getting slim. The gyms are getting slim. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So yeah, man, your boy is healthy. You know, I am healthy, man. No cancer. Um, As long as I know I'm not about to die from that stomach shit, I can live with it. I've been living with it for 10 years. 
I can just continue to live with it. Like, okay, this is life. This is what it is, you know. Sometimes it hurts real, real bad. I got to go lay down. Um, That's when it's too bad, when I just got to lay down, man. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. And, you know, my wife, my mother, my daughter, I don't like when they know. My, my my wife, she wanted me to let her know when, when I'm in pain, you know, and I don't, I don't like to tell people when I'm in pain because I don't like the phone calls, and, you know, how you feel, how your stomach feel. I hate those phone calls. So I know you love me, you know, but when you make those phone calls, it make me feel like I'm sickly. You know what I'm saying? Like when someone, someone has an issue. And you call them like, so how you feel today? How's everything? You know, it's like they sickly. You know, when like when you have cancer is, um, you're fine. You know, a lot of people have had, they're fine. They're living in their they everyday life, no issues. They go to the doctor and the doctor say, oh yeah, you got cancer. But yesterday I was good. I had no issues yesterday. I felt healthy. And then you go to the doctor and they tell you you got cancer. Your mind, it kicks in your mind and you're, you rush to getting sick because of your, it's a mental thing. And you're like, damn, the cancer, cancer, cancer. So you think about it and then you get sick really quick. You know what I'm saying? So it's the, the mental of I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. And your body start, because your, your brain, your, your thoughts control your world. So your body start feeling sick. Even though you didn't before you thought, before even though you didn't feel sick before you didn't know you had cancer. So that's why I don't like nobody calling me. How you feel? How you feel? I'm like, how I feel? Oh, I'm I'm okay. I'm good. And my stomach is my stomach is cool. Because now I'm like, okay, now you reminded me that I'm sick. Well, you reminded me that I wasn't feeling well. Oh, I got this issue. You reminded me of this issue. Now this issue is is as got legs because now I'm talking about it now it, 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 it's real because I ain't say nothing about it man for years to no one and you know I just said I, I dealt with it in silence so it wasn't real to me even though I was I felt it every single day it wasn't real I didn't act like it I didn't act like I was dealing with that and now that it's in the open, you know, my phone was blowing up. How you feeling? How you feeling? I had to tell him, don't call me and ask me that shit no more. Call me about something else. If it's that bad, I'll tell you. Don't ask me how I'm feeling. I'm good. If I don't say, if I don't say I'm fucked up, then I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for your prayers. I'm good. I am. Yeah, man, but like a lot of poly shit. That poly shit, man. I saw. I, I used. To, I used to shoot pool in uh, Culver City. Cause this is a friend of mine, man, he beat the shit out of me in pool, and I mean he beat the dog out of me in pool. So I went. I wouldn't go practice. I was shooting pool in Culver City. And it was this guy in there. He was he was Polly, and he was arguing with um, a lot of people in that pool hall. Was Polly actually? Well, he, that's what he told me. And he was he got into an argument with a girl that he wanted to talk to. And um, I forgot how, why, what, how it happened, man. But they got into an argument. Like they didn't even know each other. He was just trying to flirt with her. Just like, <coughs> excuse me. That's one thing about being poly is when does the line stop? Like, when do you stop getting new partners? Because he told me, he was like, man, I got a girlfriend. Uh, he had actually, I think he had a fiance and then he had a few girlfriends and they had boyfriends and they had girlfriends, you know. So, this, this this list goes on for 20 plus people. Everybody fucking everybody. 
and they are in relationships. Like, when does this thing stop? When is like, because if it, it, it was on that show, the Polly show, it was uh, one dude, he had two women living with him. And I thought, I was like, oh shit, this is perfect. And all three of them are lovers, you know? And it was all in love. And I thought, oh shit, this is the one. My man figured it out. This is it. And then you start watching deeper and deeper into the show. His main wife, uh, the first wife that he had, had a boyfriend when she was in school because uh, she was up north for a little while. She was in school taking classes or whatever. And she had a boyfriend that she was fucking with. And I'm like, oh, hold on for a second. Why? You was already in a, it was all three of y'all. And then you went to school for a minute and you start meeting this new dude in college. You was fucking him. And then he was, you was coming down, he was coming down to LA and you was messing with him. So now, okay, now you mess with somebody else. The dude who had the two girls, the dude who lived in the house, he was bisexual. He was fucking other dudes. I'm like, okay, so now this is, this whole, this threesome I thought y'all had together is, is not a threesome at all. It's just y'all three just lived together probably because rent was cheap that way. But all three of them had other people outside the house they was having sex with. They had groups of people that they was having sex with. See, I didn't, I don't want that. Like, it has to stop. Like, the poly life, it has to be like, okay, yeah, we poly, all three of us, that's it. Or, you know, all three of us and then, because I, I couldn't be poly for a few reasons. Because I don't like other penises in, in the mix. Like, me being poly, it could be me and 25, 30 other women, and they can't be having sex with no, no other dudes. You know what I'm saying? So, it, I couldn't be poly, because I can't share what's mine. I can't. Me and you can, I can't invest my heart in it. Because that's one thing about poly, they just, they just not having sex with random people. They claim they love all of these people or they like all of these people or they in some kind of relationship with all these people. They care about the people they're having sex with. So if I'm caring about all of these people I'm having sex with, then you cannot have another penis in you because that doesn't add up to me. Like I can't care about you if you have dicks in you. You know, I can't. It's something else then. We just having fun. But yeah, the poly stuff, man, they, they really, you know, they care about each other. I saw it. I saw it. You know? Like the dude, the pool hall, man. He, you know, he loved his wife, his fiance. He loved her. He loved all three of his girlfriends. Um, He loved his fiance, other boyfriend. And he loved his fiance, I mean, his other girlfriends, boyfriends. And the list goes on and on. They like brothers, and, you know what I'm saying? They're like, yeah, that's my brother. Your brother sleeping with your fiance. They're not blood brothers, but like, that's how they look at each other. Like, this is my brother. And, you know, my bro he was a white dude, and he was, um, his fiance was a sister. Um, she was black. And I saw her. Um, she didn't, you know, they look like, they look weird. They were some weird looking people. Like they didn't shower. They they, they didn't wash their ass well. That's what they look like. You know, that's another, I could, you know, I couldn't be in a poly relationship with somebody that looked like they don't wash their ass. But that's that look they had. They, they not wash my ass look. Their whole little pod had that not wash the ass look. That's how they look. And um, I guess that's attractive to them. You know, like, hey, you don't wash your ass either. Call me. You know, I guess that's their look. You know, I like the wash your ass look. It's just something about me. Maybe I'm weird, but I like, hey, man, we wash our ass. I like that look, you know. I guess I was raised differently, but I, I do it. That wash, there's nothing sexier than that wash that ass look. You know what I mean? I love it. Oh. The poly shit, though. 
it sounds good when you're young. You know what I'm saying? Sounds good, but I just can't have another. I just can't. I can't know. Like, I, I've been cheated on before, but I can't know that you are having other men sexually, and I'm cool with it. And I love you. I can't know that. You know, maybe... Maybe I'm bitch made. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm old school. Maybe I'm bitch made. Maybe maybe there's something wrong with me. That's what it is. I'm the problem. I would be the problem in the poly world. I would. It was like, man, you dude jealous, man. Come on, Alan. We all, we just, this is what we do, man. Why are you acting jealous? I'm not the jealous type, but I'm not about to sit in the room. Because these dudes, they was sitting in the room and they, oh, you know, all their lovers and like the dude's wife was sitting on another dude's lap and they was like drinking, having a good time. Everybody in the room drinking, having a good time. And my man wife sitting on another dude's lap and they tongue kissing, you know, and then she, you know, playing with his chest and rubbing his penis. And my man over here, the husband over here, Talking to one, talking to the boys, talking to some some other friends, you know, about sports. How are you gonna talk about sports when your wife tongue kissing another dude in the same room, and he playing with it with the dude's chest and penis, and you just over there like, yeah, man, the Pistons, they 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 need a good get, they need to get a better center. They need a trade, you know what I'm saying? They, they, I can't believe. That, you know, such and such is injured again. And your wife is right here tongue kissing somebody next to you. And you talking about sports with the fellas right here. Hell no. Respect me enough to kiss somebody while I'm not around. Cheat on me the right way. I'm sitting right there. I'm sitting right there and in my face. Respect me enough to be sneaky, damn it. That shit crazy, man. It's not cheating with them. It's the poly world, man. I, I just, like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, man. Shit's crazy. Yeah, I, you know, I guess I am old school when it comes to that. I, um, man, I have, you know... When the older I get, man, the smaller my friend my friend circle is. My friend circle is getting real small. You know what I'm saying? I I, had to, I cut a lot of people out. My my friends, my my life. You know, I had to cut a lot of people out, man. They I, it was just one dude I stopped being cool with because he was um, crying on Facebook Live. He was on Facebook Live crying, dude. And I just can't I can't handle nobody in my life like that. I just can't. He was, it was, he was like a bitch crying on Facebook. I don't, I don't, look, I believe just men should just be men, you know, and, you know, period. I, I expect certain things from men. I expect men to carry themselves a certain way. I expect men to be masculine. You know, even, even gay dudes, I expect gay dudes, you know. You do what you do. The masculine gay dudes, I expect them to be masculine. You know what I'm saying? I expect gay dudes to control their emotions. I expect all men to control their emotions. That's what I expect. So you crying on Facebook Live because your girl broke up with you and she won't return your phone call. So you went to Facebook Live and you was crying. Like a bitch. Crying. I was like, dude, we die. I wanted his battery to die. I wanted his phone just to fall out of his hand and break. I couldn't believe you were doing this. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, stop. Stop. And he was doing it, dude. He was crying. 
I get that you hurt. We all hurt. Everyone hurts. It's part of being human. You hurt, but you control your emotions. Control your emotions, man. I mean, I've been hurt before. I don't act a fool in public. I've acted a fool before. I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Girl hurt my heart. You know, I lost it. I get crazy. Um, I put I was dropping my 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 daughter off over her mother's house, and um, we just me and her mother just broke up, and I left, and they had the house, left them at the house, and uh, listening to my mother, my mother's like, just leave them the house, so I left them the house, left the house, left my own house. I was 22, 23, something, something like that. I dropped, I dropped, I drove over there, dropped my daughter off, and another dude car was in the driveway. The dude she cheated on me in car was in the driveway. They was together now. All the blinds was closed, even though it was broad daylight. The blinds was closed. I could see the silhouette through the blinds. So I seen this dude's car in my driveway. So I'm, I'm mad as hell. I mean, we just broke up, like. It's, it have not been a week we had just broken up. And I, uh, that's my first love. You know, first re real relationship, man. My first heartbreak. I was going through it. I was hurt bad. And, you know, I, I seen this dude's car in my driveway. I, you know, my boy took me over there, man. The, the mind bishop. My dog, I grew up with him. He's a producer, man. He make beats. He actually the one who made the beats to my my podcast, Alan AF. The, the the music you hear in the beginning and the end, that's him. He make those beats, man. Um, he took me over there, him and his friend. He dropped me he, he, so I could drop my daughter off. So we pulled up. And uh, now to mind, he always been a cool ass dude. Not Never been a street dude. I've never been a street dude. You know, we nerds. We ain't nerds, but we average. We don't want no trouble, you know. We the kind of cats. We don't want no trouble. So it was his boy who drove us over there. The the mom was in the front seat. His boy was in the um, driver's seat. His boy was a square too. We were squares. We pulled up, um, got out of the car. I saw the car in the parking in the driveway. Man, I'm I'm, I'm standing in the front yard, <laughs> the front lawn. <laughs> I'm yelling at them. Why is this nigga car in the driveway? I'm yelling at them through the damn, uh, from the lawn, and they got the door closed with the window with the blinds down, and I can see him hugging her. She trying to calm him down. She holding his arms first, like you know she talking to him. You could like calm down, baby, calm. Like he wanted to come outside and, and beat my ass. That's what it acted like he wanted to do. So I'm like, come on, come on outside then, dog. I picked up a brick. I was about to bust his windows out. <laughs> the bus this dude's windows out like I was a woman about to bust this dude's windows out man and I heard the bond, the mines I heard that the window was down and my man was like hey man what's wrong with your boy <laughs> he said what's wrong with your boy he said that about me what's wrong with your boy when <clears throat> You don't never want to hear somebody say, what's wrong with your boy? And they talking about you. Dude, he was a square. He was like Theo Huxtable. You know what I mean? Like, you remember Theo Huxtable? He, he, he don't, Theo Huxtable don't fight. He don't want no problems. He's just a happy dude. And he looked at me. And he was like, he looked at me and he turned to the mom. He was like, hey man, what's wrong with your boy? And the mom was embarrassed because the mom looked up to me. You know, we was, I was, he was older, his older boy, his older homie, how they say it in LA. I was his older friend, man. You know, like a year or two older than him. You know, and I, and I you know, he was like, my, my friend, that's my boy, man. He funny as hell. He's silly, you know, and he get girls because he was silly as hell. You, and my, the, the, my, me and the mind, that's my dog. So he loved how I interact with people because I'm funny. And he'd never seen me like this before. 
He was like, man, I don't know, dude. Damn. And they looking at me, dude. I'm out of character. I got a brick in my hand. <laughs> I'm up here yelling at my baby mama because she hugging another nigga through the window. And I'm mad as hell because this is my house. They in, they in my house. You know, hold, she holding nigga back. Like he wouldn't beat my ass. They in my house. He holding his arm like, calm down, baby. Calm down. And I'm on the front lawn with a brick in my hand about to throw it through this nigga's window, you know. Because he in the house boning my baby mama. Dude, I was hurt. I was hurt in public. Hurt. The neighbors was looking at me. They was like, damn, dude, he got him. Neighbors looking at me, man, shaking my head, shaking their head at me. Allen on the front lawn, man, with a brick in my hand. Because she, you know, messing. Well, she ain't cheating at this point because we ain't together no more, but this is the same dude she cheated on me with. I was hurt, dude. So I understand being hurt. I understand. You know, calling a woman, crying, come back home. How you going to do me like this? How you going to do me like this? I understand. You hurt. I get it. But you was on Facebook Live. Granted, Facebook Live wasn't around when I was a kid. Facebook Live didn't exist. When I was hurt like that. And it didn't exist. When he had his first heartbreak too. This man wasn't 19 on Facebook Live crying. He's older than me. He was in his 40s. On Facebook Live crying. Now, if he was 18 and 19 years old, man, I would have given him a pass. I would have texted him, dog, you look in bed right now. But he was in his 40s, man. He was old enough to be a granddaddy. On Facebook Live. Crying. Because she wouldn't answer her phone. He was crying. Look, women that I have dealt with in my life don't like weak dudes. They don't. They like man, they like men to be men. Toughen up. That's the era I'm from. Toughen up, damn it. Be a man. You know how I many times somebody, somebody yelled out, be a man in my generation? Be a man. That means something. That means toughen up. Stop being a bitch. Be a man about the shit. In you know, any aspect, we playing sports, you fall on the ground. Ah, oh, damn. Walk it off, dog. Be a man. Walk it off. Be a man. We wasn't allowed to have emotions as, as men, as males, when I was growing up. We wasn't allowed to have emotions. That's not 100% true. Because sometimes, you know, we cry. As a kid, we cried and shit. You all right, dog? I cried after a fight. Nobody said stop crying. They was like, hey, man, hey, dude, you fought. You did that. Nobody was like, man, stop crying. They ain't say that to me. They was just like, you did that. You know? We, we Men cry. My generation cried. We cried. I cried at my father's funeral. I cried at my grandmama's funeral. We cried. You know, but we cry when it's necessary to cry. We cry when it's according, when it's, when it's accordingly. We cry accordingly. That's when we cry. We just don't cry. You know, I, I remember it was funny as hell. We was, I don't know why we did this, but we went to go see a movie. Um, <clears throat> we was young as hell. We went to go see Ghost. I don't know why we saw Ghost. I think it wasn't nothing else planned. We didn't see Ghost. And uh, we went in there. We was like kids, man, like 16, 15. I don't remember. I don't remember. We didn't go see Ghost for some apparent reason. 
That was weird. Now that I think about it. But we went. It was some dudes. You know, my friends. We wasn't tough. I'm going to go see Ghost. After the movie theater, after the movie was over, we walking out. My boy, you can see his, in his eyes, man. His, he was crying. He cried in the movies. <laughs> I cried. He cried in the movie, Ghost. He cried. Patrick Swayze died. You know what I'm saying? He cried. And um, we blazed him. We was like, dude, you cried? He was like, no, nah, man, my chest hurt. That's what he said. That's exactly what he said. He said, no, nah, man, my chest hurt. Dude, we talked about his ass so bad. We roasted his punk ass in the movie theater crying over a movie. You know, I told y'all before I cried over um, Lion King because I was with my daughter. I wasn't expecting to cry over Lion King. It was sad as hell. My boy cried over Ghost, but he was with other men. Well, other boys, we re we dogged them. We were supposed to. You know, men could cry. Accordingly, though. Cry accordingly. You can't be crying over no woman, though. Not in front of your boys. You can't, you can't cry over no woman, man. I cried. Over a girl by myself. I was by myself. I cried over a girl. No one ever seen me do it. I didn't hold back. Like, I'm not a crier. I, I wasn't a crier growing up. You know, I wasn't I was I wasn't a crier. I you know. It's weird though, because like I could I could get emotional about like um I could get emotional about a situation, but not like coming to tears because I'm sad. I have I, I will have empathy for someone else. You know what I'm saying? Like if someone else is hurt, I feel that. But if I'm hurt, I don't shed tears when I'm hurt. You know? I just be like, oh, that's how you're going to play me for real? Damn. Okay. That's how I deal with it when I'm hurt. Like, all right. Cool, but when someone else is hurt, I, I I get emotional behind that. That's weird. I don't know why. Thank you for listening to another episode of Allen AF. It's Allen as fuck. Follow me on all my social media, man. It's I am Allen AF. I changed it from ACD comedian to I am Allen AF. Follow me, my podcast, man. Follow me on Instagram, all my social media. I am. Allen AF. Talk to y'all next time, man. Thank y'all for listening. Stay cool. Peace.